Hey, horror fans. Once again, it is me, the Horror Mizumani J. Yes, I know this is November 1st. Unfortunately, I was going to try to get this video up by the end of the 31 Days of Horror, but because of technical difficulties, I finally be able to get this video up today. So here we are, the end of the 31 Days of Horror, and here is the horror film, or I should say thriller, from Netflix. It's called Don't Move. Ooh. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the horror Mizumani. Now, Don't Move is a 2024 American thriller film. It was directed by Adam Schindler and Brian Netto. It was written by T.J. Simfel and David White. Now, the film stars Kelsey Isbelli, Finn Whitrock, Moray Treadwell, and Daniel Francis. Now, in this film, a seasoned killer injects a grieving woman with a paralytic agent. She must run, fight, and hide before her body shuts down and the killer gets her. Ooh, intense, aren't we not? You know, when it comes to thrillers, perhaps the best ones in the subgenre are those that have that count and mouse premise. You know, where the protagonist and the antagonist try their best to outwit each other, while at the same time, the protagonist is trying to save the life of a loved one or people who they care about. You know, all of a sudden, there's some type of a hostage, or this the bad guy has captured the loved one's loved ones, whether it's children, their wife, or their girlfriend, or they got a whole bunch of hostages, and they have to play this little cat and mouse game where they try to outwit one another. It outwit one another. Now we see this premise play out in several thriller films, such as Inside Man, Face Off, and Seven. You know, it really doesn't matter if they went against each other face and face or the bad person works in the shadows and the good person tries their best to track them down. It's the confrontation that makes these films very exciting and people love them. So now American filmmakers Brian Netto and Adam Schindler bring us their latest entry to the subgenre of thrillers. It is called Don't Move. Now, the setup here is simple as we're introduced to Iris, a young woman who is still grieving the loss of her son, Mateo, who unfortunately died tragically during a hiking trip. Now, while considering jumping off from the cliff where the psych where Mateo died, she is interrupted by a nice young man who calls himself Richard. Now, they bond as Richard talks about the loss of his own life, Chloe, who was killed in a car accident, and eventually he's able to talk Iris down from the cliff. Way to go, Richard. Nice guy. Unfortunately, it was all rules as Richard stuns and abducts Iris into his car as we find out now that Richard is a serial killer. Now, despite causing a car accident and freeing herself, Richard just laughs as he explained to her that he shot her with a paralytic agent and after 20 minutes, her body will shut down. Now, can Iris find a way to escape this nightmare before her body shuts down and at the same time defend herself against Richard? That's kind of what this movie is about. Now, as I stated earlier, this is a simple but very interesting uh, premise, as Iris has two things going up against her. Uh, first, having to fight the paralyzing agent that's slowing, that's slowly shutting down her body almost to the point uh, to the point where she will not be able to speak, and at the same time trying to hide from Richard. Now, I really have to get credit to Adam and Brian as they take full advantage of the location where this film, where this movie was shot from, because there are some breathtaking and beautiful shots of the forest in and around the campo of Sofia Belegria, and it looks so nice and peaceful, and they've got some nice uh, areas of the water, uh, the cliffs, that little site where, they, uh, where Mateo supposedly died, that looks fascinating, it looks very deep and nice and beautiful. You got to give them credit. You got to give cinematographer credit. The film looks beautiful where they shot this at. Now, that's in direct contrast to the danger Iris fires herself in as she uses the forest to her advantage in order to escape and hide from Richard. 
Now, there is one moment in the film where Iris shows her determination to survive as how she tries to communicate with a stranger while hiding from Richard as the effects of the paralytic angel prevents her from speaking. As I stated before, it shuts her whole body down to the point where she can't even speak. Now, she's actually still alive, but she can't just move. She can't do anything. And I think that's the reason why Richard does that, so that way he can have her away with her and then eventually will kill her. Now, while these moments are very good, and I do mean they're good, unfortunately, we just don't get enough of them that would make this film more tense as the trailer would make the audience believe that this movie is. Because unfortunately, the moments that we see in the trailer, that's kind of what we see in the film. And unfortunately, we don't get enough of those moments. Now, there are moments in the film where we get about 10, 10 to 15 minutes of dialogue between Iris and Richard or Richard encountering people while searching for Iris. It kind of takes away some of the intense moments in the film. Now, well, that's not a bad thing as we get to learn more about Richard and later on uh, his motivation is the reason why he's doing what he is doing to Iris and the, I guess, the other women he has encountered. Now, Kelsey is as Billy, I think that's how you pronounce her name, uh, known for her roles in the Western TV show Yellowstone and the MTV's uh, Teen Wolf. Uh, I think she's very good as Iris. She does a very fantastic job as playing Iris. I mean, she gives Iris a type of emotions such as grief and sorrow and then fear, anger, and strength as Iris has a great emotional growth throughout the film. I mean, when you first encounter Iris, she's very sad. She... Uh, we see her uh, obviously still in grief over the death of Mateo. And we take a look at her and we see what she's about to do. And it's like, oh, my God, she's so distraught about what happened to her son. And then we get to see what happens when Richard abducts her. And then we get to see this growth of a character. And I think uh, Kelsey does a very good job with the character growth of uh, uh, Iris. Because Kelsey makes Iris believable enough for the audience to get behind her and hope that she can survive this sniper that she finds herself in. I thought that was a great aspect of the film. Now, veteran actor Finn Rittrock, uh, known for the roles he has played in the horror anthology TV show American Horror Story, is very good as Richard. Now, I keep saying Richard in quotes because we don't know if that's his real name, but that's what he called himself when he first introduced himself as Iris. But we all know that's probably not his real name. You know, he's like a charming, caring, you know, very attractive man. If you know, if you find him, him attractive when Iris first encounters him, but then all of a sudden he becomes a deadly sociopathic and evil man with no regard for human life. I'm sure most thriller fans will get Ted Bundy vibes when watching this film because Ted Bundy uses similar ruses against his victims. And like Richard, he looked like a very honest and, you know, caring man. It's like you went putting most people put their guards down on him. And that's why he was able to get away with all the murders he got away with it. And the same here with Richard. I'm pretty sure that until his encounter with Iris, he just did not look like a serial killer. You know, it's good that both Kelsey and Finn have great chemistry together, and I love the back and forth Iris and Richard have of each other. It's one of the great aspects of the film because it plays off very well, especially during the third act of the film, as the more determined Iris shows her to trying to survive, the more frustrated Richard becomes because this is the first time he's probably had a woman fight back because he incapacitates them, and this is the first time he has to fight back, and he's not prepared for that. So he does almost any, anything and everything he can to get away with what he's trying to get away with, and I thought that was a great aspect of the film. I mean, there's even a point in the film where we get to see Iris start to get to Richard, to where he reveals the reason why he became a serial killer, and eventually he starts letting his guard down, and that's one of the mistakes that unfortunately Richard uh, uh, does. But that's good for Iris. Now, again, overall, one's not the best thrillers I've seen before. This is not Seven. This is not Face Off or some of the other thrillers. I would even say like um, some of the thrillers that um, Morgan Freeman starred in, like um, um, Alone, Kiss the Girls, Kiss, Kiss the Girls, and Along Came a Spider. It's not as good as those films, but. Uh, that uses the cat and mouse premise, but it's still a good one, you know, thanks to an interesting premise, uh, excellent cinematography, like I said, they did a fantastic job with a shot to that, and of course, uh, good acting between the leads, so like I said before, I actually did enjoy this film. So I'm going to give Don't Move three out of my five bloody gold coins. Like I said, it's not great, but it's good enough 
good enough. Like I said, great, great performance between the two leads. Uh, nicely shot film. Uh, some nice intense moments. And I think people will enjoy this because you want to be, you want to pull to see Iris survive. And I think that's the main uh, point of the film. So there you have it, horror fans. That is my video and review of Don't Move. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, and share. It really helps out with that YouTube algorithm. Have you seen Don't Move? What do you thought about it? Leave your comments in the comment section below and uh, tell me what you thought about the film. Don't forget it is actually playing on Netflix. So if you haven't seen it, you can see it on Netflix. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button. Bring that notification bell back where you'll be notified anytime when I put up new videos such as this. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as a horror miser, Monty G, and always remember that horror rules. <laughs> and I see you in my next video. Now, guys, stay safe out there.